NFL wide receiver Jason Avant has become known for his short hands and clutch plays. In his eight seasons with the Philadelphia Eagles, he emerged as a leader and a role model. Still, he was released by the franchise and picked up by the Carolina Panthers. Jason says it's all a matter of perspective. The game of football, I love to play, but in the grand scheme of life, it's this big. Mm. <laughs> Jason's outlook stems from a life of adversity. As a young boy, he lived with his grandmother in the projects of Southside Chicago. Most of the relatives that lived with them were gangbangers. Drug deals and drive-by shootings were just a part of life. I understood what it was like to come in a house with, you know, $1,000 for making drug deals because I was selling drugs in the sixth grade. Jason's grandmother took him to church and prayed for him constantly, hoping he would find a way out. I was young and I was her second chance on life. Her children didn't turn out the way she wanted them to. So her prayers were for me, Lord, let him be different. Lord, let his life be one that will serve you. Let him escape these streets. Let him do your will. A battle raged in Jason's mind between God's truth and the reality of life. And because of that environment, it made me bitter and callous toward God. Even though I knew my grandmother had something that I wanted, but I still couldn't see me serving him when some people in the world could have affluence and other people could have the bottom of the barrel. And I didn't understand that. Even then, Jason says his grandmother's words were sinking in. I tell you the truth, I was the worst gang member slash drug dealer ever because I, my grandmother gave me too much truth for, for me to be comfortable in that environment. And, uh, and you that's, couldn't ignore it. I couldn't ignore it. In the midst of the chaos, it became clear that Jason was a gifted athlete. On the playgrounds of Chicago, he decided that basketball would be his ticket out. But when his grandmother moved them to a new neighborhood with a new school, he found his passion in football. And one year playing receiver, I was the number one player in the state of Illinois. And it was like, uh, like a dream come true. Jason became an All-American and signed with the University of Michigan. He thought college would get him away from all his grandmother's talk about God and Jesus. I get to the University of Michigan and I get room with the pastor's son. <laughs> I get room with <laughs> Wherever you go, man. Wherever I go, right? Listen, <laughs> right? So I'm like, man, here I am again with these, you know, crazy religious people, right? And it still hadn't sunk in, though, had it? It still hadn't sunk in. <laughs> <laughs> but it soon would. When Jason first came to Michigan, he expected to be a star. After all, he was a top recruit. Instead, he found himself on the bench and stewing. And I'm pouting on the bench. I'm so mad because I'm not playing, I'm not dressed. Then Jason had an epiphany. And I'm sitting there on the bench like, man, I'm being a real baby right now. I'm missing this exciting game. And so the fourth quarter, I get up off my seat and I begin to cheer with the crowd and get the crowd pumped up. And um, we end up winning the game on a last second field goal from 56 yards and win by one. And it was the, the greatest, one of the greatest victories that um, I've ever had um, as an athlete. And, and it has nothing to do with the win, but it was more so me dying to self, and then I made my life about others. And, and uh, it was one of those moments where um, I saw how selfish I, I was. With a new attitude, Jason finished out the season and even saw some playing time. But he admits his heart was still empty. So at the end of his freshman year, Jason went to church, where he says he heard from God. He began to show me all the times being in a game um, neighborhood and be selling drugs out of my grandmother's house. All the times my house was shot up and nobody was um, killed from it and how he protected me over and over again. The last thing he showed me is like how he gave me this talent that I didn't know I had and um, how he used football to bring me to this place. And he began to just replay all of these things over in my mind. And at the end of that, it was as the Spirit speaking to me, after all I've done for you, Jason, you can't live your life for me. And the Bible says that it's the goodness of the Lord that brings us to repentance. He was so good to me, so merciful to me, so kind to me. That May 4th, 2003, I finally said yes and surrendered my life to Jesus Christ. Afterwards, Jason went to see his grandmother. 
And I was able to go there and say, you know what? I thank you for showing me that Jesus is the way, the truth, and the light. I thank you for all your prayers. I thank you for being a good person. I thank you for helping me find the right path. And I tell you that because of you, I surrendered my life to Christ. And it was the happiest day of her life because she enjoyed me going to the University of Michigan. But her goal in my life was that I was finally surrendered. <laughs> and I finally surrendered to God. And, and that next year, she passed. And uh, it seemed like she stayed around long enough for me to find Jesus Christ. After having a stellar career with the Wolverines, Jason went on to have eight productive seasons with the Philadelphia Eagles, where by all accounts, he was admired and respected by his team and the community. Now with the Carolina Panthers, Jason knows his days in the NFL will eventually come to an end. But he says no matter what might come his way, he knows God will pull him through. And that's what I love about God, is that he's a God of the comeback. It seems like it's always going down and it seems like it's never going to work out, but he has the power to raise up dead things. He's the resurrection and the life. And um, I was definitely on my way down, but I know him now to be the resurrection and the life.